Oh, we got a lot of rain here. Seth even did some laundry. Don't put that water to waste. So as you can see, the shirts in the sleeping bag are now in the rinse cycle. Hopefully this rain will end soon and the sun will come back out. That's the problem with depending on the weather. You're never sure that's going to happen, but hopefully it will. Dry everything out. We'll have nice, fresh, clean laundry. Okay, so today is Monday, May 20th, and we need to sail out from behind Miami Beach, and uh, we'll get back out and anchor behind Key Biscayne. From there, we'll have easy access to the old Florida Channel, and then out, out, out to sea, and on our way back to the Chesapeake. In order to get out of here, we're going to need a northerly component wind. The other thing is we want to do this just, we want to leave just before low tide because I find that with an ebbing current you'll have a favorable current at the first bridge but at the second bridge and then the last one further out you'll have a favorable current heading south when the, the tide is flooding and I think that's because so much water comes in through the government cut. Um, I've not been able to get any any detailed tidal current information. That's just based on my own observations from sailing in and out of there several times. Now Wednesday 9 a.m. we got northeasterly winds but the current is already flooding. So low tide is around 7 o'clock and we got northeasterly winds, but they're very light, about four knots. But if we wait till Wednesday afternoon, around five or so, then we got northeasterlies at 11. So that's a possibility is to leave Wednesday afternoon. And Thursday, we still got northeast winds. They're a little more brisk. On Friday, we still got northeast winds and they're brisk. Saturday, we still got northeast winds on Saturday. And Sunday, we're getting really north, almost north northeast. And then Monday, oh, we got northerly winds on Monday. Low tide's right around 10 o'clock, so actually Monday, all the way out to Monday. Now, recall that uh, while we need northerly component winds to get out of here, uh, we're headed toward the Chesapeake Bay, so we're headed in a north-northeast direction. So uh, then we, we, we want a southerly wind shift before we head offshore. And we especially don't want brisk northeasterly winds and to get into the Gulf Stream because it's going to get quite rough. So, on Tuesday we still, okay, we got easterly winds on Tuesday. So easterly is Wednesday. So a Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday departure is a possibility. And so possibly sail out of here on Monday and then put out to sea on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, the reason I don't want to take the first available window out of here is just because life gets far less convenient when you leave South Beach. From the anchorage behind South Beach, you can dinghy into the Collins Canal. It's about a quarter mile or so. And there's a dinghy dock you can use. And just across from that dinghy dock is a Publix supermarket. And there's also a gas station, a hardware store just down the road. There's also a water tap at the police dock, which is not too far away. There's a Starbucks coffee just down the road. And of course, there's no shortage of bars in South Beach if you want to go out and play at night.
So it's Wednesday, May 22nd. I've decided to take this window instead of waiting till Monday because the weather forecast has changed somewhat. Uh, looks like more like easterly winds on Monday. So I'm going to take a fair wind when I got it. But won't get all short until next week. So I'm just thinking about uh, getting it all short like Tuesday. So trying to get a gauge on what the wind and current is doing once we exit the Venetian Causeway and get into the ICW, where we're going to have to sail through three sets of bridges. So we're starting to get into the ICW now. We still got the ebbing current pushing us toward the bridge. And the wind is behind us, which is good. But that also means there's no turning back now, so it's rock and roll. carrying a fair wind, well a little fluky in here, and a fair current right through, so we're going to shoot right through the first bridge, no problems. So as you can see, I got the dinghy lashed on the quarter there. And right now I'm debating whether or not to start the outboard, just in case I need a little extra push when I get under those bridges. But I'm looking through the binoculars, and I'm seeing fair wind all the way through. So I'm going to elect to sail through this one as well. As you can see, we're making good speed, and we, we got a fair wind through this uh, so far through this second bridge. However, we got a foul current, and according to my watch and tide tables, the tide should be beginning should be beginning to flood now, which is canceling out my theory that a flooding current is fair through this second bridge because the water is all flooding in through the government cut. And it appears like a flooding current actually still sets to the north as well. So, so I'm not too sure about that theory now. So, of course, now that we're in the lee of the structures, the winds are fairly light. But we still got enough to move and stem the current. And now that we're out of the cut, the current is a bit weaker. And approached by a towboat U.S. boat. Nope, don't need a tow. Thank you very much. Uh, more sufficiently clear now, now so that I'm going to let the dinghy drop astern. 
so it's not banging against the hull. Also, as we get out into more open water, either from boat wake or wind chop, it's not good to have the dinghy tied alongside. Water can start slopping up between the hulls and filling the dinghy up. And one thing you always got to be careful of when you're solo is uh, while you're doing things like retying the dinghy, you're not watching where you're going. I almost sailed into that day beacon there. So just remember to take a look around while you're doing things. So we got a little more open water, so I'm going to raise the staysail here. And the wind should fill in pretty soon once we get a little further along. It's around 6.30 in the evening right now. So we can take a little time to just enjoy the, enjoy the scenery, the setting sun. And now we're approaching the last bridge and we definitely have that flooding current going against us. But we do have a good fair wind, so I'm not too worried. Though recall this is, uh, this is the bridge I nearly hit coming in about five weeks before. But we're going to sail right through, no problem. And now we're into Biscayne Bay in much wider and open waters. So whenever we get a fair wind, we're going to head out the old Florida Channel and begin our trek north. As you can see this passage up to Virginia is it's a run of about 750 miles and we're pretty much just going to follow the Gulf Stream. But we want to have light southerly component, light to moderate southerly component winds if at all possible. That'll be the fastest and most pleasant ride. So in the meantime I'm just cleaning and greasing the gudgeons on the trim tab keep those keep that friction nice and low so that uh, the steering vane will steer in light winds <laughs> 